Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. And if you are joining us today, I like to believe that that is because you need to translate files from AutoCAD to MicroStation or vice versa. And maybe perhaps you've had some issues with that. Maybe you've had some data loss, you've had a variety of issues or some challenges. And so we're gonna be sharing with you some great tips and tricks to make your life a little bit easier as far as that conversion is concerned. And these might be some of the questions that you could have had along the way that will be addressed during this webcast. What are you gonna do if objects display with different symbology when you're translating from DGN to DWG? Or how do you, how do you handle the mapping of levels or layers and fonts and line styles and line types along with all the various other types of objects and issues that we have that are different inside of MicroStation versus AutoCAD? And then how do you handle 2D or 3D files or models during that translation? And how about XREFs or reference files? What happens when you're translating those between MicroStation and AutoCAD? And what about global origins? You might've run into some issues with that. We're gonna talk all about that in this webcast. And how do you control which models are translated to DWG to your AutoCAD drawing file? So you've probably run into a variety of these issues. All of these questions will be answered today. But before we get started on that, I would like to introduce uh, Paul Kuva. He works for Axiom. I'm actually coming to you today from the Axiom office as well in Clearwater, Florida. I'm very excited about that. I'm sitting in the CEO's office today. Shh, don't tell anybody. And uh, Paul is executive vice president, and he's going to share with you just a little bit about this fabulous company. Paul. All right. Well, thanks, Lynn, for the introduction. I appreciate it. Appreciate you coming out here and visiting with us. It's always a lot of fun. So for those of you who may not know us, uh, Axiom has been around for about 30 years, and we have helped thousands of AEC professionals over the course of that time. We provide tools, productivity tools for AutoCAD, MicroStation, and Revit, and we help make design professionals' jobs a lot easier. Great, uh, today we're gonna be going over one of our tools. And our tools work very simply as a menu item in either platform, whether it's a MicroStation or AutoCAD. Uh, the tool that we're gonna be focusing on today is called Translation Manager. And we also have other tools as well. Um, for instance, we have a tool called Office Importer where you can import Excel and Word documents right into AutoCAD, MicroStation, or Revit with a copy and paste with perfect formatting preserved. And, and a stack of other tools that you could see at our website, which is axiomint.com. Yeah. We did some webcasts as well on that. If you're Absolutely. Watching We've done, those. Yeah. If Quite you go few. to our, yeah, if you go to our website, you will find a little menu item that says uh, tips and tricks, CAD and BIM tips and tricks. And one of the drop-down box selections will be uh, webinars. And we have our, all of our webinars are, or many of our webinars are recorded there. So you can view them at a later time. All right. Anything else you want to add to that, Paul, before I introduce some of our other um, amazing people? You know, you know, I do have a, I'm interested to see if uh, folks here today that are joining us, because we always listen to our, you know, the, our attendees, and I'm interested to see if they're translating between AutoCAD to MicroStation or MicroStation to AutoCAD or both. So I'm gonna launch a quick poll. And if you could help us out by answering that, one of the questions there, which, what conversions do you do more of? AutoCAD to MicroStation, MicroStation to AutoCAD or both? I'm just gonna leave it up for like uh, another, you know, 15 seconds or something. Do like you wanna know which one they do the most, if possible? Yeah. Or if they just had nothing else to do, they decided to join our webcast today. <laughs> that should be another option on there. <laughs> Neither. Yeah. They just wanted to listen to our charming webcast. Okay, thank you for that data. Can we see it? It says here, here, yeah. It What's says it? here that most of our attendees wow. um, are translating from MicroStation to AutoCAD. Uh, okay. If we were doing just a, one of the selections, but most of them are doing both. There's a lot of both on there. Yeah. Okay, so that's all right. Very that's interesting good. information. Oh, Huh? Perfect. Okay. Anything else, Paul? Well, I just want to thank everybody for uh, always attending. We get a great bunch of feedback after the webinars, and 
I know, Lynn, uh, we hear a lot of great feedback regarding how you're presenting and uh, Frederick, so I'm getting ready for a great webinar today. Yeah, we have, we have a good time on these webinars. Yep. You do. We always have a good time. All right, so behind the scenes is the fabulous Aaron. Wave at him, Aaron. Hi. <laughs> Aaron's, Aaron's gonna be answering questions, so if you have any questions, this Aaron's the man to answer them for you. you have anything you wanna say, Aaron? Yeah, you gotta type your questions into the chat. Do it anytime you like. Uh, don't worry about whether you think that question will eventually get answered. I mean, it probably will, but ask. And um, I'll make sure to answer everybody directly. And also, um, I will uh, also uh, throw some of those questions verbally to Frederick here and there. Um, some of the ones that I think maybe are useful to a lot of people, that kind of thing. So ask throughout, typing it in, I'll give you answers. And, um, you know, just let us have it. All right, good. Thanks. And that brings us to the Oracle. It says Frederick Keniston Director, but it actually should say the Oracle. Nobody calls him Frederick, right? It's just the Oracle. He's amazing, he absolutely respond, amazing. He doesn't respond to his given name. Yeah, he doesn't at all. <laughs> he's, he's given over 2,000 online presentations, so we're definitely in good hands. He's a, he's a great presenter. And uh, behind the scenes, he's also very talented. He's an amazing guitarist. And earlier today, I was blessed. He actually came into the office and played for me. Hello. <laughs> he plays the mandolin, too. When was the last time you met somebody who plays the mandolin? And more importantly, this is a picture of his cat. I told you we have fun on these webinars. <laughs> it's his cat name. Four. <laughs> He's cat is orange, orange, but today the cat right, is black and white. Famous. So. <laughs> He's a famous cat, very famous cat. And uh, so Frederick, the Oracle, is uh, going to be doing a demo. He's going to be uh, showing us all kinds of tips and tricks and to help make your lives a little bit easier in the translation process. So unless I left anything out, I think we're going to we're going to hand it over to you, Mr. Okay, Oracle. Great. Thank right. you very much for the introduction, Lynn. And uh, it was my pleasure being able to play a little bit of one of my songs for you. Oh, it was fabulous. Awesome. So I need to take a uh, presenter here. I think I'm going to pop out now, right? Uh, I'll, be, you, I'll, I'll be, be back in a little bit. To the chat. Send us your questions while, as we go, guys. Right, I'm disappearing. Great. And now I'm going to see how do I. We see all your notes now. We'll just Top oh, secret great. notes behind the scenes. Great. Now we know. Now we know how the magic happens. Yeah, that was. That was. Now they okay. know we prepare. <laughs> That's right. I prepared. Be prepared. That's not Darn a bad it. thing. That's the secret. That was homework. It was. It was only half a page. The rest of it I have in memory. So there you go. <laughs> All right. I'm so sure you do. That I have a very good memory. So the subject today is translation between uh, AutoCAD DWG files or drawing files and MicroStation DGN files or design files as they're called. And this is something that happens all the time today. Uh, in fact, it's as the years have gone by, um, MicroStation's orientation has uh, almost exclusively been towards uh, civil engineering. And AutoCAD from its inception was more oriented to architecture. As a result, of that and also differences in the programs of how they put their particular drawings together. Um, there's some design philosophies and things that are handled differently as far as how the objects in AutoCAD and the elements of MicroStation operate and are handled, that sort of thing. And in addition, as time has gone, as we get closer to present time, uh, more and more people are using either AutoCAD or Civil 3D for uh, civil engineering work. Um, in addition to people that are still using MicroStation and flavors of MicroStation for civil engineering work as well. As a result, businesses for many years that have been oriented to either more AutoCAD side of things or more MicroStation have had to bid on and take jobs where they're delivering the final design work and documents in uh, either my, the opposite format of the one that's their forte, for example, if uh, you're an AutoCAD shop, you'd bid on jobs, keep the doors open, keep business going through the doors uh, by delivering a, a job that requires MicroStation files. And also the, vice, the opposite has also occurred many times. And it's just something that uh, in many cases, the larger and even some of the, many of the smaller uh, engineering firms and design firms have to deal with. So that's what I'm gonna cover is some things that 
you have to know from both sides of that viewpoint, MicroStation and AutoCAD, to care for translating from one format to another. Now, they do things differently. And one of the problems that you uh, bump into often, so they do things differently. One of the problems that you bump into is AutoCAD has had its orientation for putting drawings together in this fashion. You have model space where you do your geometry, and then you have your paper space layouts, which you then link in the data from model space with different viewports and stuff like that in order to uh, get your documentation put together. In MicroStation, it's, it's been kind of a, a separate design philosophy where you create a single file that has the geometry in it, and then you would create separate uh, design files in MicroStation as your sheet files, and then you would link in the original file with your geometry into those sheet files, scaling it up or down and uh, rotating it, whatever is necessary, and then adding your annotations and stuff to the sheet file. Now, in MicroStation V8, uh, early 2000s, they actually change the internal guts of a microstation file to where it each it has different areas that can hold uh, elements or objects as from the AutoCAD point of view, um, similar to what AutoCAD does, except with this following exception. So AutoCAD has model space and one model space and then any number of layouts. But in a microstation V8 file, you can have any number of equivalents of what would be model space in an AutoCAD file. They're called design models in a microstation file. And then you can have other models, which again are just containers for elements um, in the microstation file for sheets and also called uh, drawing models and things like that. And those are some things related to how the files are organized that you have to care for when it comes to translating from one uh, format to the other. Now, uh, MicroStation has had line styles that are auto scaling. This is a, another difference. You might, and no matter how zoomed in or zoomed out you might be related to the line styles, you see the line style the same way in all cases. Now in AutoCAD, they have what we call in MicroStation custom line styles. So that as you zoom in, the spaces or gaps get bigger. And as you zoom out, they get smaller and smaller until they look like a solid line. These are some of the issues that cause differences and problems when translating between the formats. And the other part of that is, is this, is that almost every project requires you to follow certain standards. In AutoCAD, the standards that you get in order from a client where you're going to deliver AutoCAD files is very often very different from the standards that you're required to meet in a microstation project. Um, there can be some similarities if they're based on things like the uh, national uh, CAD standard as put out by the uh, National Standards Institute and also the um, International Standards Organization as well. And in many cases, though, the standards are going to be some uh, subset of those and then other standards that are either uh, driven by the client or driven by the design firm that's doing those. So depending on the work you're doing and what the client requires, those standards could be either um, all of one or a mixture of other standards. In other words, there's a standard, but it's it's a mixture of other already existing standards in many cases. So it's just something that you'll have to care for too, which I'll go more into that as I go. Um, also, if you're designing in MicroStation and saving the AutoCAD, and you know you're gonna do that, there's some fundamental things you should be aware of, and also the other way, which I'm gonna go into here. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at an AutoCAD drawing and we're gonna open it up in MicroStation. So I've already got the file open here, but what I'm gonna do is, this is MicroStation V8i. This same sort of process will also be true in MicroStation Connect versions uh, of MicroStation or different updates thereof. So if I go File Open, you see this dialog box. If I then select a AutoCAD drawing file here, you notice this dialog box has option. If I click a design file, a microstation file, notice this options button here is grayed out. So when it comes to DWG or AutoCAD, I have these options that are going to be necessary when I'm opening a file in a microstation, an AutoCAD file, in order to make it display right so that I could then save it out if I needed to as a microstation file to make sure that it's going to come out the way I expect in, so I can use it in uh, microstation. So I'll click the options here. And here's some things that you're, you're going to care for. One, notice it says architectural or engineering units. It's set to inches in this case. And then you'll have uh, decimal scientific or fractional units. And when it comes to these, 
in most cases, when you're trying to go from AutoCAD to MicroStation, this was more um, the issue when you were using AutoCAD files, legacy files that were made with AutoCAD 2016 and earlier, where uh, in MicroStation, the standard has been uh, due to state plane coordinate systems uh, that the different states use, that they are they base that standard on a US survey on US survey feet, which is a, just a tiny bit bigger than a, a standard imperial foot. And in AutoCAD 2016 and earlier, um, there wasn't a specific US survey foot um, uh, unit to be able to use in AutoCAD when creating AutoCAD files. So what I'm going to go over here is going to be more of a concern where you've got legacy files that you're trying to bring up to standard and then shift them over to uh, MicroStation in that regard. And it's just something that you have to care for when it comes to legacy files that you're using in AutoCAD 2017 and, and up, just to know that it, it should automatically translate and uh, utilize that if you've got your um, template files set properly to use US survey feed, that the older legacy uh, 2016 and earlier AutoCAD files will then operate correctly in newer versions of AutoCAD due to that difference. Now, what you do here in um, the basic settings here for the DWG open options in MicroStation is this, is you wouldn't really worry about what the architectural or engineering units is gonna be. The, the main concern for you is, is this, is the decimal scientific or fractional units. And notice it has here, it says seed file master units. And this is uh, more particularly, uh, uh, or will apply more particular to the 2016 and earlier uh, legacy AutoCAD files. When I click here, notice I have a number of different options I can use. And the one that's selected here is seed file master units. And if you just go down here and use uh, US survey feet, it's, it's not gonna translate outright because in the 2016 and earlier versions of AutoCAD with just the standard Imperial foot, things are gonna, if you just select US survey feet here, that is gonna make it so that any new objects that you create when after you open the file in MicroStation and save it out as a, a MicroStation file, are gonna be placed using uh, US survey feet, but the existing objects are not gonna be sized related to a US survey foot. So how do you handle that? Well, you do it this way, is it says seed file master units. So what you do is you use a seed file, which is like this in MicroStation, the same idea as a template file in AutoCAD, and you make sure that it's set so that it's master units. And if I go to my design file settings here, I'll show you here. It's settings design file. And this is actually locked based on it. Oh, because I've got the AutoCAD file. Let me open up another one here. Da, 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 da. MicroStation settings design file. So notice it says mass units. If I set this to US survey feet, and this was a seed file, same as a template file, then I would pick my seed file that has the US survey feet utilized. And then when I open the AutoCAD file and I tell it with that setting that I showed you earlier to use the mass units in the seed file, which is set to US survey feed, then everything that comes over when you translate that file and also its references, if they're translated at the same time using that same seed file, all the measurements of things where things are located, including in references and in your file with the geometry and that sort of thing, and your layouts uh, is all gonna come out um, in the proper locations. And you won't be pulling your hair out trying to figure out why things aren't uh, placed where they should be, should, should be. And you won't have to do things or think you have to do things like scale things up or down in order to try to make things fit. So that's one of the main things that you'll have to care for. Uh, again, mostly dealing with legacy files when it comes to uh, AutoCAD 2016 and earlier and trying to get them into formats in MicroStation that you could use. If you're using uh, references, again, um, if you have your reference files and you're doing the translation at the same time and it uses that same seed file, they'll translate over fine. And then Another setting in MicroStation, when I go back, I'll go file, open, select my DWG file options. So that was there. Then you've got uh, preserve MicroStation settings. Now, this this is more for the case when you've got the file saved or, or opened up in MicroStation and you've got certain things that you're doing to the file before you save it out as a design file, then things like special tool settings and and other things will be saved out when you save it into a DGN format. 
So in most cases, you're going to want to uh, do that because if you're doing work on it in order to tweak things before you save it as a DGN file, then any settings that you had for the design file that you want preserved when you then finally save it as a DGN file, then they'll be saved in the file. The seed file you use, again, this is related to the seed file master units. So in this case, I have I took a copy of the TransSeed, which is a standard um, translation seed file that comes with MicroStation, and I, I just made a copy of it so that I could edit it because it's metric by default. So if you don't have a seed file to be able to use to do your translation with in the scenario I gave you where you're dealing with some legacy files in AutoCAD 2016 and earlier, then you're going to want to find that copy of the seed file. In fact, I'm going to let me adjust something here. So I'm go uh, show you that here. So go down to my uh, files here. I'm going to click my shortcut. So notice here is the MicroStation install area for where your seed files are located. It's uh, C program data, Bentley, MicroStation V8i, select series. If it's the connect edition, it would be down in its connect folders as opposed to V8i. Workspace system C. And here is the translation seed file. Again, this is a metric file. So what happens is, is if you need to use it to uh, have the, U the US survey feed utilized, or if you're also just translating and you're using newer AutoCAD files, 2017 and newer, then you'll want to edit that to make sure it's using the proper uh, master unit. It's either going to be US survey feet. In fact, it'll be US survey feet in any case, whether you're dealing with legacy files or not. It's just more important with the legacy files. And then you'll you'll make a copy of it and save it out because you may need to use that, that transceed for other things if you're going to be doing more mechanical stuff where it relies on metric measurements sort of thing. And then after you save it and you adjust the design file settings in the area that I just showed you earlier, then you would just navigate out where that copy is, grab it, and then when you do your translations, it'll it'll operate pro properly. When the translations are done, things will be in the places where you expect them to be. Also, you have uh, model space settings, create 2D models for model space, and then paper space settings. Now, the reason this is um, here is for the following things. In my, in, like I mentioned earlier, you have uh, model space and then paper space layouts in the AutoCAD file. But in MicroStation, you've got, you could have more than one quote model type space and then a number of uh, uh, paper space type sheet models. Now, in many cases, when you're dealing with a MicroStation file, the, the tradition has been, but this doesn't have to be uh, used all the time, and it kind of depends on what the specifications are for the person you're doing the job for, is the model space geometry, you want it to come in as 3D. So you'd make sure that this option is off. But then for paper space, oftentimes in a MicroStation file, you want those sheets or models, as they're called, to be 2D in MicroStation. Why? It's just because. But in AutoCAD, they're both by default 3D spaces, whether it's a model space or paper spaces. Model space from AutoCAD to MicroStation, since it's 3D natively in AutoCAD, you'll want it to be 3D in MicroStation for your geometry. And then for your paper space layouts, in, by default in AutoCAD, they're 3D, but in MicroStation, the tradition has always been to have those as 2D. Again, it depends on the specifications that you need to deliver your drawings into. But if that's the case and you turn this option on and then your layouts are gonna come in as sheets that are 2D in the MicroStation model when you translate them. Frederick, I have, um, I think there's probably a, a perfect time for a question we got from Carl in the chat because it yeah. has to do with, um, if you, you know, in Carl just says basically, look, I've got, um, what do you do when you have a multi design model DGN and you're going to DWG? I mean, that's pretty self explanatory, right? Because you've only got uh, one model space um, right. in any DWG, but you can have, but MicroStation can have unlimited number of, an unlimited number of design models, which is, it's okay, I guess, the other direction, but what do you guys do in the direct, what, what does somebody have to do in the direction towards CWG? Right, in that case, since you can have basically multiple model space in a MicroStation file, is you would have to, through the translator translation settings, is pick, and I'll get to this when I get to uh, saving files out from MicroStation to AutoCAD, awesome. is you have to tell it uh, which mod design model that has geometry that you want to make the paper space in or the model space when you save it out as an AutoCAD file. The other design models, you would have to then translate separately and specifically pick those so that 
in the AutoCAD file that they're translated out to, they become the model space in that particular design file. It, it takes a little bit of extra work, but in most cases, the way uh, MicroStation files are set up with basic uh, uh, standard way design files have been put together in the past, it's not gonna be a usual thing where there will be multiple design models in a design file, but it could happen. But again, in that case, you'll just have to translate each separate design model out to its own DWG file, so it becomes a model space in that DWG file. It's and probably good answer. advice that, to add that, um, I'm just thinking of this as you're talking from what you're saying, yeah. it's probably good advice to add if you're planning to provide, you know, turn your DGNs into DWGs eventually. It's probably a good idea to stick to one to design model one design per design DGN, model, right? right? Like but just avoid it. That's right. Even if you don't, it's there. You just have to care for that as far as your planning when it comes to delivering your your files. It's Good. gonna create. It's gonna create more work for you, though. Obviously. Thanks. Thanks. That's yeah. uh, that's that, that. I think that really answers that one question. I'll uh, give you some more questions as we go. Thanks okay, for cool. thanks to Carl for that question. Yeah. No problem. So global origin. This is one of the points that Lynn brought up that we're gonna cover here, and that's um, related to this. If I go into advanced. You'll uh, actually, where is it here? Da, 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 da. I might be going, I might be going way ahead of myself and, and totally missing the option here. Advanced, yeah, there it is. Use CFA global origin. Now, what is a global origin? Well, in MicroStation, it is this, and it's directly related to um, since MicroStation has been oriented to mostly civil engineering design type work. Um, states use, uh, and many state departments of transportation, even to this day, use uh, MicroStation or some flavor of MicroStation, but a lot use AutoCAD as well. But in the MicroStation side, when it comes to the state plane coordinate systems that the states use to orient where they're, it's, it's an orientation point related to the specific state. And then all the measurements and roadways and, and survey monuments and things like that are all associated to that zero, zero point for the state plane coordinate system. So what that means is this, when it comes to the design work you're doing, some clients will require that you use a global origin for the work that you're, you're doing for them. And if that's the case, they're going to supply you with a seed file that would have a, like things like US survey feet for the uh, mass units that are going to be used. And then the subunits in that case would be inches, but also the global origin would be set in that particular seed file as well. If the specifications for that work require um, that you use the uh, global origin, they will tell you in the specifications and then you'll have to turn that option on here so that the seed file that they provided that you're using to get the files translated from AutoCAD to MicroStation will use then the global origin. Places like uh, I think Caltrans still requires this and then there might be a, a couple other places that do. It's not as common as it used to be. It used to be very, very common related to uh, state plane coordinate stuff, but it's not as commonly needed anymore or just not utilized anymore, I should say. All right, so there's that. Um, so those are some of the important options that um, you should be aware of. Another thing that I'm gonna cover here is line weights. Now in MicroStation, I'm gonna open up a MicroStation file here first. Oh, actually I, I have the one open already, Ta da So when I go to line weights, which is uh, line thickness, in MicroStation, these numbers that you see here are arbitrary, but actually they're they're not really arbitrary. They're actually pixel widths. So it's unlike AutoCAD, where in AutoCAD it's actually a real world real world measurement for line thicknesses. So it's uh, millimeters of of some you know some portion in an AutoCAD file. Now this is something that you've got to care for related to doing translations also, because if you translate um, a, a line thickness of one in MicroStation to an AutoCAD file, you have to map it specifically to the line weight that you want it to be in AutoCAD, which is real world, real world measurement. So if I go file, save settings as, and now we're gonna go the opposite way. Notice I've got my options here. Under, let me see, is it advanced? I forgot where my setting the line weights, there we go. So notice here's the line weights that you got in MicroStation up to 31, so there's 32 total. And then here are the line weights in millimeters for AutoCAD. So here you can click on the AutoCAD side and you could map 
from MicroStation, the line weights that you need them to be in AutoCAD. You just go through and you set them to what you need them to be. And notice at some point, after you get to 15 and up, it's all, it just defaults to 2.11 uh, 2 millimeters. So you can set those as needed so that when you then save your file out, either directly from MicroStation or you use the batch converter, uh, which is available in, under the utility settings here in MicroStation as well, then it will map those accordingly. You have a similar ability in AutoCAD as well, uh, which I'll, I'll just touch on here in a little later. So that's saving out as an AutoCAD file. And then um, now I'm gonna select my original DWG file that I was working with earlier to show you the options here. And then, uh, oh, actually I'm, I'm ahead of myself. I've covered the things I wanted to do there. And now I'm gonna go to Actually, let me open the file first. I forgot that's what I was going to do. Lost, lost track where I was. All right, so I've got my DWG file open now. After I've gone through the settings through the DWG open options, then the geometry should come in as I uh, reasonably expect. There's going to be some things geometry-wise that uh, will not, like shapes and things like that from AutoCAD, will not translate directly over into MicroStation. And you're really going to have to take a look at um, how your your data is set up in the AutoCAD file. And then if it's more than just basic line work, if it's like surfaces and things like that, you'll have to check the documentation because some entities will map over to MicroStation entities and vice versa going the other way as well. But the documentation will specifically tell you which ones will not. I'm just not gonna go over those specifically here. It's something that you'll have to care for, particularly of solids and surfaces and, and things of, and shells, things like that. Now, in many cases, the stuff will translate over, or you'd have to translate the surface, shell, or object, solid, as the case may be, into a line work or some other geometry that will translate more directly, and then you just have to care for that on the output side of the file. Now, what I'm gonna do is go File, Save As. Now that I've got my DWG file open in MicroStation, and let's say I'm gonna save it out now as a MicroStation file. I've already done this earlier, but when I do this, when I click options now, it's going to be different now because, oh, actually not V7, I didn't want, I wanted V8, good. So now from here, you see you've got remap, you've got references, and you've got filters. So at first I had options for caring for how the file looks when I open the DWG file in MicroStation. And now, since I'm going to be pushing it back to, directly to a MicroStation file, there's some things I'm gonna to wanna to care for. And one of the things is mapping levels, fonts, line styles, colors, and weights. And what you do here, and you have this a similar setup in AutoCAD as well, is I'm gonna create a comma separated value file. You just click this option and give it a name. And then what you do in that file, in fact, I've got, I think one here, save, yes, let's save it here, is you'll then open it or it then opens, I should say, in Excel. And notice it's got levels, colors, weights, line styles, fonts, also cell names of, and this is gonna be where you set up your mappings from levels to layers, fonts to fonts, and things of that nature. This is where the fine control comes in for the translation. And in fact, in AutoCAD, I'm gonna go ahead and open it now. And what I did here is I'm gonna click import, design, click a design file and then click open and it changes the the dialog box to give me import settings. Now here I can click, see where it says mapping set, setups. When I click that, I can either create a new one or use a standard. If I click new, created a copy of it, I could give it a different name and then it's just currently just one standard. I'll click continue and now from here I can map from the DWG or DGN to the DWG side where are these maps. So this is similar to the setup that I utilized or am utilizing in MicroStation where I'm using this comma separated value file. Now you'll notice here it's got a button and when you click this button this will take a look at the currently loaded file in MicroStation, the active file, and it will grab all the levels that are used in that active file. Now ideally if you're doing if you're going to be doing translations from 
MicroStation to AutoCAD and you happen to be in MicroStation doing it, is it gives you a lot more control in the MicroStation side if you're going that direction as far as uh, things you can care for going from MicroStation to AutoCAD. Then you would want to make sure that you've got a either a seed file or another design file that has all, or DJ library file, I should say, in MicroStation side, that has, or some file that has all the levels, the fonts, and everything else that the input MicroStation files have. And then when you come to level and click this button, it will then list all of those levels. That way you won't miss one. And then it'll make it easier for you to then, um, for the DWG side to map things to the appropriate levels or layers on the DWG side. You can kind of fool this where if you have the microstation files that you're going to translate a representative file and you've got all this data filled in for the levels the and the colors and everything else, you can save it. And then for the levels in particular, you could open a DWG template file or a, a drawing template file and then load its levels into a separate comma separated value file. And then you could copy and paste those in here to make the mapping go a bit quicker. This is a bit tedious working with this interface and similar to the AutoCAD side. I go back here. So, but it's where the fine control comes in. So that the idea being is if you take the time to set this up based on what you know the output files are gonna need and gonna need to have, it's gonna create less work for you later on when you have to then uh, take the output files and maybe tweak them or polish them up a little bit prior to delivering them to a client. So the time spent in this, even though it might be a little bit tedious setting up the comma separated value file or these various mappings that you see here, I've got similar mappings that I showed you here in the, uh, the comma separated value file, is, is gonna be time well spent. Uh, once you have this set, you can save these mapping options here on the AutoCAD side, and then you can save the same settings here in your comma separated value file and you could use these over and over then again when it comes to on the microstation side exporting or translating out to AutoCAD and then also in AutoCAD then importing on the DGN side to AutoCAD as well and by saving those it's it down the road if you're doing a big project and you're periodically going to be Say, uh, translating files out and checking them and, and tweaking them to make sure they're in the format they need to be, then saving these settings for mappings and stuff is going to save you a lot of time as the project goes. So that's um, that's working with the comma separated value files and different mappings and things like that. And when it comes to references, you have similar settings that you have to care for as well. So if I go to references, notice that if, if you have more than one view, right now I've only got one view displayed here, view one, and MicroStation you can have up to eight. But so it's gonna use the levels from that particular view uh, for the references. Now you can either, uh, self-attachments, you, you don't really have that in AutoCAD, in MicroStation it's a uh, file reference to itself. And you can have that, uh, that's used uh, fairly often, it depends on what it's for. But you can re either retain those when you translate the file out and it would then become a separate attachment when you save it as a, uh, or no, because uh, I'm saving it as a V8 file, I'm sorry. So you can retain those or you can merge them into the MicroStation file or you could merge it to a cell or omit it. Same thing with external references. You can either retain them, you can merge them into the file that you're translating, merge it to a cell or a block, that would be the term you'd use in AutoCAD, or omit it. You also have uh, merge visible edges of 3D attachments. So that would be, uh, to the extent that the view shows them, it would merge up to that point, the edges of 3D attachments that are displayed. You also copy levels during the merge. If an override exists, um, and overrides are related to, in MicroStation, a, a view setting, where you can have the symbology set for a particular level, and then you have a level override symbology set. So if those exist, then you can tell it to use those, and if they're, um, and then merge them in as far as those levels, or you can say if they're not found, go ahead and do that, and if the overrides exist, go ahead and do that, or always do that. You have a couple options there. You also see here that related to the references, you can convert them, and more than likely in 
every case, if you're going to be delivering uh, a set of drawings to in a certain in the certain format, in this case MicroStation, you're going to want to convert the references as well, because then when you have them, they'll be in MicroStation form based on the other settings that I showed you earlier, including remapping and things like that. And then optimize clip for a reference merge. If you're going to merge the references into the master file, then it would do things like if there's um, um, shapes or uh, solid geometry or 3D elements, that sort of thing, it will then clip those, but then it would uh, basically close them up so that they're still solids or they're still um, uh, closed shapes, that sort of thing, after the merge is done. And then you could do unnesting as well, which would copy live nested attachments. In uh, MicroStation, you can have up to uh, I forgot what it was, uh, I think it's 99 levels of nesting, but almost no one uses that. But if you have uh, references that are nested, you know, one reference to another reference to another reference, then a copy, what that would do in translation is it would take those nested ones and just make them attach directly to the master file, uh, where all, that way, all of the references would be attached directly to the, in this case, the microstation file when it's translated out. And then you could also say merge display levels only. So only those levels that uh, have their display turned on would it then merge into the design file. But in many cases, you're going to have levels that may need to be used for other work that you might need to do later and you want to preserve those. So in most cases, you'll just say um, leave this off because that way it'll merge all the levels, whether their display is turned on or not. Frederick, I have a great question. Um from the chat, I thought it's a good time to bring it up. Sure. It's a, uh, it's a, it's, it's one with an easy answer too. The um, I'm says if our company doesn't have an expert to set up all these tables and CSV files, um, how can we still translate or convert files from one program to another? I answered that one to the whole group, so everybody that wants to read the questions in the chat can see it. But I mean, the answer is pretty straightforward. If you hang on till the end of this webinar, right? We're going to cover uh, Axiom's own software translation manager that takes a lot of the a ton of the time out of setting up those translation jobs and helps you get good translations done the great translations done the first time right yeah um, so i just kind of wanted to bring that one up here and because um, it was a really good relevant question we'll cover that at the end um, and that's one of the main reasons that that software exists is to exactly to help people with that so i thought i would um share it which i did um speak it which i'm doing and um and uh thank the person who asked it thank you very much Cool. So yeah, and in fact, here in about five minutes, I'm going to be doing a quick uh, show of Translation Manager related to all these things I've been showing you, as a matter of fact. So geometry. So everything in, and that's the default. If you have a fence set, which is just a, a way of uh, setting um, uh, a particular piece of geometry in a microstation file, where you can then say uh, group, uh, you have different uh, types of fences where you can say everything within this geographic or, or in this geometry or everything in it and crossing it and you have different ways you can specify it if you have that set then you can say only merge the geometry that's within that fence if you have a selection set which is something you can also set up in microstation you can say only use the uh or mer or translate out the elements that are part of that selection set that you then uh choose uh clip volume if you've got a clip volume that would be an area in a design file where you've got, um, you say, you know, I want you to clip everything outside this area, whether it's 2D or 3D, then you could either say ignore that clip volume or uh, bring in things that are, are all within inside it and then cross it or um, don't ignore it at all, but then just cut things where the clip boundary is and only uh, bring in the things that um, do not cross but are just within the side. It's, it's similar to um how you use a fence but slightly slightly different in relationship to um, 3d objects in particular then here you see models when i click models this is uh one of the questions that was brought up earlier and you, when you click this all the in this case the file that i'm going to save out you see you've got model and the layout one layout two so this is looking at the dwg file and be saving out to microstation if i didn't want certain layouts then i could just pick and choose the layout and then the model space that I wanted and then click OK and that's a way you can filter what exact data you want in this case to come from the DWG file uh, and put it into the microstation file. You have 
uh, a similar setting when you save out to tell it oh, what what model and then what sheet models well, design model if you have more than one design model and then what sheet models you want to select when you save out as a DWG file. So that's um, the main things I wanted to cover here. Um, let me just check, backtrack, make sure I didn't miss anything that I want to make sure I covered. Ah, one thing on, on line styles that I'm just going to uh, hit upon a little bit. Line styles are um, MicroStation AutoCAD and vice versa are, as I mentioned earlier, a bit different. Now, there's data in the documentation, which I've gone over and utilized a little bit, but it's something that you're going to have to go in and dig in to, based on how your files are set up as far as planning what you then do with those when you're, if you need to do a translation. Because, um, like I said, MicroStation's um, own pixel width, uh, kind of arbitrary uh, thicknesses, and then the real world ones, those will translate out pretty well. You just use the mappings there. But when, when it comes to custom line styles, there's going to be differences. And you have to go deal with, in MicroStation, a line style resource file. And then in AutoCAD, you have the .lin file, which you have to do some setup related to translations. And you have to check the documentation on either MicroStation or AutoCAD to determine which way is going to get you the most bang for your buck when you translate out. Because uh, some of the things are going to save, some of them aren't. Some are going to save out in, with uh, names like in MicroStation to AutoCAD in particular, you'll end up with DGNX as a line style. And in that case, you can select it and then you can change it to one that you want in uh, that's a standard like uh, AutoCAD line style, but it, it won't translate or map out directly just due to the differences in how they handle custom line styles. And the last thing, um, actually there was one more thing related to that that just escaped me, I wanted to, oh, there's another thing that you can do microstation to AutoCAD and it depends on the nature of your AutoCAD file once you do the translation from MicroStation to AutoCAD, and that's this. If the purpose of the AutoCAD file is that you just want to uh, be able to view the data and print from it, in other words, you actually don't need to do any work on or update any of the geometry, that sort of thing, in the AutoCAD file, then you could, through a setting uh, in the, the options here, tell it to save the line styles out as a uh, uh, geometry. In other words, it won't make them a line at all, whether it's continuous or other default line. What's going to happen then is if, if it's a dotted, dashed, uh, or different type of custom line style, in the AutoCAD side, it'll just drop it to individual pieces of geometry. So you'll have uh, you know, a little object, it'll be a dash, or another one that'll be a dot, and then spaces between them. And then when you click them, it's just going to select that object, and it won't select a line. But again, if you drop those as um, unsupported line styles in AutoCAD, then what's going to happen is you'll have you won't have the exact line type geometry, but you'll have the stuff dropped to its component elements. And again, only that you would only use that if you're going to be printing or just viewing the data. But if you need it to be line work that you want to work with, then again, take a look at the data on dealing with the resource files and the .lin file in AutoCAD side and see how it's best going to fall out. Again, in most cases, it's going to be, you'll have a line style that's named like DGN with a small x, and then some number or name. And then you can choose that and then say, make that, uh, change that to fit an AutoCAD line style that you, you want it to be sort of thing. So that's all I really wanted to cover. That covers all the main points that um, I wanted to. Oh, except I just want to make one more mention of one thing. I, Frederick, I want to say we're kind of running out of time. If you want to share the translator, you probably oh, actually, you know what? need I, to get um, on that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to have to do that. Thanks. I, I, I actually way, feel... Yeah, you're I so went, into it. I hate to interrupt it's, you, but... It's fine. I filled in... I actually filled in a bunch of data uh, based on some other research and things I've been playing around with. So uh, it's all good. But I'll just make a mention when I uh, open Translation Manager here that the translators okay. themselves have different file formats that they can deal with. So as you see here, this is Translation Manager, and this kind of ties in everything that I showed you, whereas bouncing from MicroStation to AutoCAD is all tied up in kind of one interface. And plus this gives you a bunch of other tools related to things that I was telling you about and other things that uh, are not part of the standard translation side when it comes to both 
AutoCAD and MicroStation. So first thing you see here is this interface was put together because we used to do a bunch of consulting for people that were doing translations. And they they would pay us for consulting and we had the product manager who developed translation manager uh, go through and use the MicroStation translator and later the AutoCAD translator as well to help people do their translations. And he developed some tools for pre-processing the files and then he also developed some tools for post-processing the translated files to do things like on the initial side, gather data that you'll need in order to do the translation itself. And then on the post-processing side, things that you'll need to do to clean up the files after they've been translated. And one thing that I often show people is, related to it is this, is everything I just described be tied into one interface and we added his pre-processing tools here and post-processing tools as well but you have the different modes from MicroStation to AutoCAD and the AutoCAD DXF, DWG, MicroStation V7, MicroStation V8. The exact formats that you can that are can be input and then can be output are going to be dictated by the translator you use. MicroStation it's, or the translation manager itself doesn't translate the files itself. It it uses the translators that you have installed in your system. Now, um, I need to just do a reinstall, but I've got AutoCAD 2020 on mine and when I do a reinstall this program, it'll recognize and add this to the list. But the MicroStation translators give you more capabilities when it comes to controlling the translation. And that's one thing I want to hit on here. When I click configure, you'll notice that I've got nine different categories from basic to remap symbology. And that's going from MicroStation AutoCAD. So you have a ton of control so that you can make your output DWG files coming from MicroStation very, very close to what they need to be in the final output, so they require little or as a, as little attention as possible to get them in the file format you need. Then lastly, or or conversely, you can go MicroStation to AutoCAD, or, or AutoCAD to MicroStation, duh. And then when I click Configure, notice there's five categories. Well, in the case of the AutoCAD translator, there's only three categories. You get references, remap, and uh, one other item. I, I forgot it what it was off the top, I think it's basic off the top of my head. So in all cases, if you've got MicroStation, you're gonna be better off if you need to do translations going from one format to the other, because you're always gonna have more capabilities to as, when it comes to controlling the translation using one of the MicroStation translators. That doesn't mean that you can't do it with just AutoCAD, it's just gonna take more work on the output side to check the files and make sure that they're in the format that you need if you're going um, either direction. Now you choose the files you want to process and then under pre-process, it gathers data from your input files. Now you see it says levels and colors and things like that. What it does is it writes DAT files that will uh, are separated out by the different categories that are just text files in the folder where the loaded settings file, which you see here is MicroStation AutoCAD.pjt named in the title bar is located. And those files are used when you go into the comma separated value file, you click on a button and it just imports the data that's in those files. So you already have then, without having to go and manually gather it, all the data from your input design files or, or uh, files that you're going to translate into your uh, different uh, categories for remapping. That way you don't have to manually go out and grab it or make sure that you've got a file that has all the data in it already. You can just grab the set of files that you're going to translate and it'll grab all that data. You can also fool the program and tell it kind of like you're going to do the opposite translation. Grab files that are representative of the output files and also do the same evaluate option on them. And when you do so, you can then, it, it'll cut down the time on gathering the data that you need for the configuration on the output side as well. You can also do different modifications and uh, drops or explodes as needed and compresses and purges of unused shared cells or block definitions and things like that. On the configure side, I went over that. Um, you also have remap symbology. This is the same area I showed you in the MicroStation translator side. And you also have this in AutoCAD as well, where you go out to a comma separated value file and, and set up your mappings like I described earlier. Translate would then translate the files. Then in post-processing, you can handle things like this. Um, you can do drops or explodes, and under modify, you can replace special text characters. This is often the case where you're mapping from an AutoCAD file to like a, a MicroStation specific file, 
where there's not a matching file. If you use true type fonts, you don't have to care for this. But if you're going from AutoCAD specific or MicroStation specific font to the others uh, font, then you might be missing things like uh, centerline characters or other things like that. And if you are missing those, this helps you replace those on the output side. So after you've got your files processed, let's say you had a centerline symbol used on the input side, and on the output side, uh, you don't have that font that you're mapping to doesn't have the centerline symbol. This will help you replace that. You have other tools that can you can use to modify the files that are translated as well, plus compress and purge them to make them leaner and meaner for dealing with as well. And lastly, with two minutes left here, um, each one of the post-processing and the pre-processing steps have a backup, automatically backups of files, because you're going to be making modifications to them in these particular portions of the program, more than likely. So you'd always want to make sure you have a good backup because it's a batch processing tool. But this gives you an added layer of security to uh, give you backup copies automatically as default. So that's an overview of Translation Manager and pretty much the end of the technical part of this particular uh, webinar. So I hope this was beneficial to you and gave you some data that you can use. And All right. That, back to you, Lynn, and everybody else, and thank you. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so we were gonna do some questions, but now I'm not really sure we have time for that. So I, let's, I can't hear you, Aaron, you're quiet. I'll slip one in because I think we can get it done in time, but a question came in. I was so busy answering the questions, Frederick, I don't know if you answered this one. Um, can, your, can our translation manager software translate um, in both directions? I know the answer, um, okay, or yes. just one to the other. Yeah, it's both directions and all the different file formats. The the only DGN, DWG, DWG, DGN. Right. The only restriction is what formats the exact translator can use. And as they've come out with newer versions, they've left some of the older versions of things that could input and output. Like DWG uh, versions and stuff. Is that what you mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So in that case, I'm going to turn it back over to you, Paul. I know you have a poll. We need to let these guys get out of here. We have a poll. Yeah, absolutely. So for the first thing, I'd like to let everybody know that uh, we really, really thank you for uh, spending time with us today. And um, as always, uh, stay tuned. There will always be more webinars to come. Um, if you'd like a product information sheet, you can download it in the uh, area on your sidebar, or I could send that to you as well as a follow-up. I will can also send you a recording of this webinar. And um, we could also schedule a live private demonstration if that helps you and speaks to your uh, project. I would be glad to extend that to you or your team or all of the above. I'll leave this up for another second or two. You want to spend a little bit more time with the Oracle. Yeah, and you could That's spend right. some time with Frederick on a one-on-one. On -on -one. He's been Maybe a he'll play the guitar for you, too. It could happen. Uh, that's very possible, Lynn. <laughs> All right, and I personally would like to thank, I'd like to thank the whole Axiom team for inviting me to come out and join them. And I want to thank everybody who took time out of their busy schedules today to join us. We hope that we got that you got a lot of the uh, answers to your questions that you had about translations. We do have a lot of uh, demonstrate, a lot of trial versions for many of our tools on the website. Uh, but for Translation Manager particularly, <laughs> we're glad to do a private demonstration because of okay. the complexity. All right. Okay. Cool. Okay. All, all right. I'm in trouble it's now. All good. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Everybody. You guys have a great rest Thanks of for the week. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining awesome. us today. Stay tuned for the next set of webinars we're going to be doing. They'll be coming up in November. All right. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.